Gentlemen, my name is Justin Mark, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why I party sober. All right, guys, so over the last eight years, probably closer to 10 years, I struggled with alcohol. To tell you the truth, I was an alcoholic. And the reason I say I was an alcoholic and I admit I have a problem was because was I drinking every single day? Not necessarily. But when I would drink, for the most part, usually I was really cool. Usually it was really fun. Usually it was a great fucking time, right? But every now and then I would get out of fucking control. And you know, one drink would be two, two would become three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next thing I know, I'm fucked up. And next thing I know, I'm freaking out or just crazy or fun, but waking up and being like, where the fuck am I? Or just annoying, weird drama. And I remember I did quit for almost a year. Then I started drinking again. And then I met a beautiful woman I fell in love with, took her to Niagara Falls, asked her to marry me. She said yes. And then next thing you know, I'm wasted in the club, pounding tequila shots and fighting with her. And she wanted to break up with me. Now we eventually fixed the relationship, went on to date each other for a year, be with each other, spend a lot of time with each other, but it ended up not working out anyway because I decided I wasn't ready for that long-term commitment. And so we went our separate ways. And what was crazy to me though, was how I noticed alcohol deeply, deeply affected me. So I quit drinking because I realized that it almost cost me someone very close to me. But on top of that, when I audited my life, nothing good really ever came from alcohol. Usually I would drink to deal with the anxiety. I would drink because I was nervous. I would drink to deal with the inner emotions that I didn't want to deal with. I would drink to deal with <laughs> the social anxiety that I still have, even to this day, even though I've dated hundreds of girls, traveled all over the world, done all these amazing things, I still have horrible social anxiety. And it's so easy to just hold the drink, have the drink in your hand, take a sip, and anxiety slowly fades away, right? In a weird way, it arguably makes your game better, makes your soul skills better, you're witty, but then, you know, maybe four out of five times you're good, everything's good, but then one out of five times, it's not good. Drama, fights, craziness, egos, problems, relationship problems, whatever the fuck it is. I looked at my life and I was like, I don't want this in my life. Another thing is like, let's say you're going out two, three times a week, right? And you're drinking. Then you're gonna be hung over two, three times a week. Then right there, you're losing half the week to hangovers and you're poisoning your body. Alcohol is literally poison. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about how I transitioned my life from one of drinking to one of being sober, but maintaining an amazing social life, partying all the time, having an awesome nightlife business, being able to travel around the world, make friends, have amazing relationships, and even go on and date beautiful, beautiful women and not need to drink at all. Okay, so it all started in 10th grade. Uh, I was dating a girl named Alex, and Alex was disgustingly unattractive. <laughs> the only reason I went for it was because this weirdo named Matthew messaged me on Facebook saying, hey, this Alex girl likes you, messed her on Facebook. So I went on her Facebook timeline and I'm like, hey, what's up? Did you do the history homework? And we went back and forth, you know, everyone in school saw it, so everyone knows we're talking and stuff. And then over Facebook, eventually asked her to be my girlfriend. We never kissed, we never hooked up, we never did anything intimate. We just held hands, I would walk her home after class. Very, very awkward. And then I remember uh, this douchebag named Tyler came up to me. You know, Tyler, such a douchebag name. Tyler's always a douchebag. And uh, shout out to Tyler, right? Fucking douchebag. He, he came up to me and he was like, so you're dating Alex? I guess you should take what you can get. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I'm the Indian dude dating the ugly white girl who's just really fucking gross, whatever. Is what it is. I kind of just, you know, set my ego aside. And it was crazy because at lunchtime I was spending time with Alex. I was always really awkward. I was always trying to fill in the gaps in the conversation. And after about, I think it was like 17 days, Alex dumped me over Facebook. That night I went into my parents' liquor cabinet and I remember my, my dad had a bunch of like uh, orange liquor and a bunch of other stuff. And I got drunk for the first time. And I remember my mom came home after work and she saw me drunk and she was like, is everything okay? She didn't realize I was drunk. She thought I was just tired. And I'm like, yeah, I'm tired. Cause I passed on the couch. So that was like my first time drinking. And after that, I started going to parties, going to social events, being more social. 
and alcohol actually did help me a lot. It helped me deal with my anxiety because when I was drunk, when I became drunk Justin, right? What would happen was the real me would come out. I would walk around everywhere being like, hi, hello, just super drunk and super happy. It was like this cute little 16 year old kid being like, hi, can I have a hug? I love you. Just giving all this love to everyone. So that was who I clearly wanted to be deep down, but I couldn't do it because of my social anxiety. So alcohol kind of almost in a weird way taught me who I was internally. So it played its role. But then when it got to a point in my life where I was relying on it to be social, when I thought it's like necessary to have fun, when I need this to go out and party or I can't have a good time without alcohol, that's when I thought this is a fucking problem. What got even crazier was in 2015. I was 20 years old. I had been drinking off and on for five years, right? And I had a girlfriend. And, you know, I would drink with my girlfriend because there's nothing to do to keep me entertained. So I'd drink and then we'd get in fights and drama and stuff like that. And I remember one time she was pissing me off. So I walked up to a girl in front of her in the subway, started flirting with the girl in front of her, and then just started making out with the girl in front of her. Fucked up. Even to this day, I regret that thinking, holy shit, what a horrible thing to do to a woman who was in love with me. And the reason I was doing it was because I was jealous that some other girl was hitting on her. So like, there was a girl hitting on my girlfriend, right? And I told my girlfriend, I'm like, can you stop this girl from hitting on you? Because, you know, even though she's a girl, I don't like it, right? And the girl was like kissing my girlfriend's face. But my girlfriend herself had social anxiety. So she didn't know how to like tell this girl to fuck off. So I was like, all right, you're not gonna do anything. I'm gonna go hit on other girls. I walked up to a girl, we start making, like, I don't think we even made out. I think it was just like, mm -hmm, whatever, okay. Nice to meet you, see you around, right? And my girlfriend started freaking the fuck out, obviously, right? But she had a panic attack. She started like hyperventilating and freaking out. And I was like, holy shit, what did I do? And I felt horrible about it, right? But part of it was because I was fucking drunk. Actually, that was it. It was because it was alcohol. It was the alcohol, because I would never do something like that sober. So it was causing relationship issues. And then it was causing me to have depression. It was fucking my head because I was drinking four or five times a week, right? And it was causing me to become depressed because alcohol is a depressant. That's what it does to your body. In the moment you feel good, later on you feel horrible. It is horrible for your mental health. So my mental health was massively going downhill. And so I decided to quit drinking and I had quit drinking for about nine months. My mental health skyrocketed. I read an amazing book called The Ultra Mind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. Check it out. Amazing, amazing fucking book. And I completely changed my diet, stopped drinking, no drugs, nothing for nine months. And it was incredible. It was amazing. And it gave me clarity. I broke up with a girlfriend because I realized she wasn't good for me. I got very spiritual and in touch with myself. And really, my, I was living a different life a year later. It was crazy. And so then, next thing you know, I got assaulted. I was in a wheelchair. You can actually see videos of me picking up girls on YouTube in a wheelchair. Craziness, right? Back in 2016. And I was on my way to Cuba. And in, on the flight, they were like, hey, you want some champagne? And I'm looking down at my foot. I'm like, fuck it. Champagne, cheers, right? So I started drinking again. And I remember after three days, four days of drinking in Cuba, I felt fucking depressed, right? And so next thing you know, I'm drinking again. And so I, I was drinking for about a year and a half, you know, socially, parties, events. And then I decided to quit. I decided to pull the trigger and quit because I realized it was plaguing my life. Now it's been about three years and I haven't drank alcohol. And in the last three years, I've had an amazing life, traveled all over the world, dated some amazing people, have had so many new friends come in and out of my life and just had so many amazing experiences that typically would have been used or triggered by alcohol. So the alcohol would allow me to have these experiences, but now I was doing it without alcohol. How great is that? I was able to be charismatic, be social, be myself, be awesome, and be able to give my gift and my values to the world without drinking. And so really, alcohol was just an excuse to live this amazing life, right? But I decided that I can live it no matter fucking what. So here's a few things I would say to you is when you go out to parties and events, you don't need alcohol. Now, if you want to try to quit drinking, my rule already was don't start drinking till like midnight or 1 a.m. So like right before they close the bar, that way you're not all fucked up by the end of the night. But I just cut that out completely and decided I'm not gonna drink at all. Uh, and also I'm very careful not to spend time with girls who are drinking because that could open up its own can of worms, its own problems, right? So I'm very careful with myself drinking, but I'm also careful to not hang out with people who are excessively getting really fucked up or are really drunk all the time, right? And so you gotta be really, really careful. So first things first, you don't need alcohol to have a great time. 
You can be social, be fun, have a great time, go out to parties, be social, be yourself, meet girls, party, network, whatever the fuck it is you want to do without drinking, okay? Secondly, drinking is actually just going to fuck up your health, your mental health, your body, everything. It's going to bring your life down. And it's crazy because you're going to lose so much time to hangovers, right? And what's even crazier is like I could party all fucking night, right? And then I could go home at like 3, 4 a.m. and I could be doing work, right? I could be doing client stuff because I'm not drunk, right? I could be filming YouTube videos. I could do whatever it is I want to do because I'm in control, because I'm sober. And I don't wake up the next day with a horrible fucking hangover. So the amazing thing is the health benefits, pff, amazing. And it's crazy how we live in a society where drinking is just so integrated into our worlds, right? You don't need it. You can actually learn to be a charismatic individual without drugs, without alcohol, just by yourself. The third thing is because I don't drink, I now attract people who don't drink. So the girls I date aren't some dumb drunk club weirdos, right? They're usually pretty great people. They're usually, you know, educated individuals. They're oftentimes girls who also don't drink, which is awesome. Right? And on top of that, it's made me very hypersensitive to energy and people's vibes. So now I'm very careful to avoid drunk girls and avoid just crazy people and avoid toxicity because a lot of people who are constantly drinking tend to have a lot of weird emotional baggage and toxicity themselves. So that's an awesome random benefit you got that you will get uh, from not drinking. And another thing is a lot of people think that being in a club or a party or whatever, it's weird. It's weird. You're the weird guy because you're not drinking. If someone literally tells me that I'm the weird guy for not drinking, in my head, I literally think this person is a piece of fucking shit. They're putting poison into their fucking bodies, right? And then shaming other people for not putting poison into their bodies. It's like, hey man, tr hey man, try meth. Imagine I come up to you and you trust me. And we've been knowing each other for years. I'm such a good friend. And I'm like, hey bro, just try some heroin. Just do it. You won't try heroin, man? You're fucking weird. Why are you at this party? You're not drinking heroin. Like, imagine how weird it would be to do that. Well, if you actually just go on Google right now and search up drug chart, you're actually gonna see that alcohol is the worst drug you can put into your body, okay? I'm gonna search up right now, drug chart. Go to Google Images and you can actually see, this is what comes up, okay? It says, ping through the nose. Alcohol is at the top of the charts. Heroin, crack cocaine, and methamphetamine are right under alcohol. Alcohol is the worst drug for you. Now, in terms of what it does for your body, uh, heroin, crack cocaine, and methamphetamine are worse for your body, but in terms of harm to others, community, economic, and environmental costs, and then crime and injury, and then family adversities, alcohol beats all of those. So alcohol isn't necessarily worse for your body, but it's worse for the people around you, right? So it's fucking horrible. So usually when someone tries to give me shit for not drinking, uh, I will kind of just say, oh dude, I'm driving, or I will say, oh no, I, I'll just tell them the truth. I quit drinking because I used to be an alcoholic. I quit drinking because it was a fucking problem, right? And oftentimes when people try pressure, come on, just drink. And you don't have to get defensive tell them to fuck off. Obviously, my default would want to be like, dude, suck my fucking cock. Stop trying to tell me to fucking drink, you fucking scumbag, right? I was a fucking alcoholic. Fuck off, right? If it gets to that point, like, I don't think it should ever get to that point, <laughs> but like, that's always an option. But it never does. I, I'm just very grounded. I'm like, dude, I'm not drinking. Like, stop, stop, right? Or I'll just laugh. Like, ha, dude, like, fuck off. I'm not drinking in a friendly way. I'll, I'll kind of tell them to fuck off in a friendly way. I'll be like, ha, 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 dude, fuck off. I'm not drinking. Stop trying to get me a drink, right? Or I'll try to convince people to party sober, right? Plus, a lot of those types of people, those are a lot of like those kind of random acquaintances that you'll meet in the night anyway. You'll probably never see them again anyway. So it doesn't really fucking matter because I'm not going to try to keep people like that around ever. Someone who tries to be that person in my life, they get cut the fuck out of my life, bro. They're getting cut, okay? Because you shouldn't hang around losers because you become the average of this five people you surround yourself with. So if you hang out with winners, you become a winner. If you hang out with losers, you become a loser, right? So hang out with people who are like-minded. So if you have a certain goal, you should try to hang out with people who have that same goal. So that's honest to God why I party sober. And uh, I mean, if you actually look at like the impacts alcohol has, on people's lives it is fucking horrible. Quitting drinking is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. It's helped me to level up so much and it kind of just forces you to deal with who you are instead of escapism, instead of escaping into the drink, instead of escaping into this different mindset, right? It allows you to just deal with what's inside and you're vulnerable. And then when you socialize, you can almost get drunk off of that. 
Oftentimes I go to parties and I feel like I'm high. I feel like I'm in the zone just for my social skills, just from the way I'm making myself feel. Instead of getting it from a drink, I'm generating it from within. I'm generating that vibe, that state from within. I'm getting it from within inside myself, getting in the zone without drugs or drinking. It's awesome. You should fucking try it. It's an amazing experience. On top of that, it makes my game sloppy. This is like another thing. It makes my ability to meet people, maybe meet intimate partners, very very horrible. Like, let's say I go to a nightclub and I'm single at that time in my life and I want to meet someone special for that night, <laughs> right? A special friend, a special girlfriend for the night, right? Well, now I can't effectively communicate with people because I'm fucking wasted. I can't effectively communicate because I'm like, you know, I'm just like a fucking zombie, right? And so it's made it easier for me to build connections and build intimacy in relationships, whether short term or long term, right? Don't get me wrong, drinking has its own bonding effects and can really do things to your brain, but I honestly don't think you need it, especially when you learn high level skills of communication. And that's why I offer a lot of my coaching programs to teach other guys how to build communication skills without drinking or alcohol. So one thing you can actually do when you go to these parties is have some soda water in your hand. Just if anyone asks if you're drinking, I'm just like, I'm just drinking vodka. I've gone to a point where it's like, I don't want to have to explain my life story to every single person I meet. I don't want to explain it every time I'm on a party, right? I was on a boat party in Australia and uh, we were out in the Great Bear Reef, two day party, everyone's drinking. I'm the only person not fucking drinking. It was fucking hard. I was this close, I was like, I wanna drink, but I didn't drink. I stayed resilient to not drink alcohol, not fall into that peer pressure, not fall into that external pressure of needing to drink so I could fit in or whatever the fuck. And I had a great time. I was one of the coolest guys there. I made friends with everyone. I was flirting with all the girls. It was a fucking great time, right? A two day boat party with like 40 people or 50 people were going crazy. Partying is awesome, right? And I didn't need alcohol to have a good time, right? So you don't need it. So I would highly recommend you try it out. See how it goes. Cut back. Just try to cut back your alcohol consumption and see how you feel and see how it impacts your life. And I noticed one thing that was crazy. After I quit drinking, I 10 x my income about six months later. After I quit drinking, I started making literally 10 times the money <laughs> every month, which is fucking insane because now there's no brain fog. There's no, there's a clarity behind my actions and what I do. So that's my advice. There's a million and one different reasons to quit drinking. But anyway, my name is Justin Mark. If you guys ever have any questions or need any advice, leave it in the comments down below, or you can actually message me on my social medias, message me on my new Instagram, drunkjustin2, message me on my Snapchat or Telegram, linked in the description, all social medias linked in the description. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like my content. And if you don't, make sure to dislike this video. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but <laughs> if you do subscribe, click the bell notifications so you're notified of new videos. I appreciate all the support and all the love I always get from you guys. I would be not even close where I'm at, today if it wasn't for you guys. So I'm really grateful for having each one of you guys as part of my life and my community. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. We'll see you in the next video. Peace out.